Is victim blaming in the DSM? Let's dive into the history. I'm Jamie, I'm a licensed therapist. This is the series Dark History of Mental Health, what nobody wants to talk about. And in this series, we're gonna cover a lot of the untold stories of the history of mental health, and it gets pretty dark. We are reading from some of Judith Herman works, and by the way, she's still alive, and she lives in Massachusetts. She is a woman psychiatrist that wrote a book called Trauma and Recovery, and we're gonna just keep going. So I wish this was ancient history, but honestly, what I'm about to read to you, my mom was about eight years old during this time, so um, this is actually fairly recent history. Remember that with this book, she introduced the world to complex trauma, which is trauma endured over a prolonged period of time. The tendency to blame the victim, however, has interfered with the psychological understanding and the diagnosis of a post-traumatic syndrome. Instead of conceptualizing the psychopathology of the victim as a response to an abusive situation, mental health professionals have frequently attributed the abusive situation to the victim's presumed underlying psychopathology. An agrarious example of this sort of thinking is the 1964 study of battered women entitled The Wife Beater's Wife. The researchers who had originally sought to study batterers found that the men would not talk to them. They thereupon redirected their attention to the more cooperative battered women who they found to be castrating, frigid, aggressive, indecisive, and passive. They concluded that, that marital violence fulfilled these women's masochistic needs. <sighs> she continues, having identified the women's personality disorders as the source of the problem, these clinicians set out to treat them. In one case, they managed to persuade the wife that she was provoking the violence, and they showed her how to mend her ways. When she no longer sought help from her teenage son to protect herself from beatings and no longer refused to submit to sex on demand, even when her husband was drunk and aggressive, her treatment was judged a success. Let's go back to the 80s. So these dudes try to fight masochistic personality disorder to try to get in the DSM. That one doesn't make it in, but self-defeating personality disorder does. It's found as a descriptor in other personality disorders in the DSM-3. And years later with the DSM-3 revision, it stayed in the appendix in 1987, my lifetime. It was never its own diagnosis, not because they didn't think it was real, but because it had too much overlap with other personality disorders. It wasn't different enough from disorders that are in the DSM today. Can you guess which ones? 